Hello, everybody. So today we are going to be doing um, the next in the Conan chronology series, and um, today we are doing um, the first chapter of Black Colossus by Robert E. Howard. And if you haven't read this yet, you can go over to weirdmask.com and um, read this first chapter. Um, so this story, and if you recall me saying sometimes Conan feels like a secondary character in these stories, this is a um, prime example. This first chapter, um, and real quick, it's important to know that this was that this story was published um, just a few months after, um, like six months after the Phoenix on the Sword. So um, the readers of Weird Tales already knew um, the future of Conan, okay? So there is a lot of foreshadowing in this story about Conan becoming a king and all this other stuff. So that's kind of important to keep in mind here. The other thing is this story opens up in, um, oh, and that's what I was going to say. Um, this was the first story Robert E. Howard wrote after selling his first batch of Conan stories to Weird Tales. So I almost feel like, um, he was going kind of hard at it because this is, I mean, up until this point, the longest Conan story. Um, it's roughly 15,000 words. Not until, is it Pool of the Black One or People of the Black Circle? I can't remember off the top of my head which one's longer than this one. Um, but the other thing to note is that if you read the only... Robert E. Howard Conan novel, which is Hour of the Dragon, um, a lot of this will seem like refresher to you. Um, a lot of what happens in this story um, kind of forms the basis for a little bit of um, what happens in Hour of the Dragon. Okay, so with all that said... Um, we are in the land of Kuchimis. Um, This is not where the story will totally take place, but um, this is a important little side note. Um, it's almost like a prologue to this story. So um, this Zamorian thief that is super well-known and renowned in Zamora um, named Shevadas is um, going here because this is one of those like Holy Grail type um, legends. He's going to this the ruins of this um, civilization that at one point like 3,000 years ago was kind of like one of the most beautiful places you could be. Um, and as he gets there, he sees all these ancient ruins and destroyed, dilapidated everything. The sands of time have destroyed so much. And then when he gets to the center, there's this beautiful, like, ivory um, structure that looks like it's being polished every day. Like, Time does not do anything to this place. And um, legend has it that Thugra Kotan, um, the ancient wizard, the legend has it that he, um, when the Hyborians, the Hyborian barbarians came through and laid waste to this whole village that he ran inside this ivory structure and waited out um, the onslaught 
until he could be freed or whatever. So Shevados goes up and does this like crazy thing. He's like boom and um does this Legend of Zelda type um puzzle and opens this door that hasn't been opened in like three thousand years. He starts walking down this corridor and hears this noise and there's this giant serpent. So just imagine a giant snake, okay, coming at him. And he knew this was going to happen because this is what the legend said. And he pulled the sword from his side and it was like dripping with this like green ooze, this venom of the same snake that is said to be inside this thing. And he has this plan. He's like, okay, the snake's going to jump at me. I'm going to jump to the side. I'm going to slice its head off or whatever. And the poison from the blade will kill it if my strike doesn't. Um, but this serpent is fast as crap. And it comes charging at him. And instead of doing anything cool, he just goes like this. Ah! And like sticks the sword out and like closes his eyes. And then um, he realizes he's not dead, but the sword gets ripped out of his hand, and he looks, and the sword went into the snake's mouth, and the snake bit down on it. And the snake's writhing all over the place, and, and death rose, and then dies. And obviously he's thinking, like, wow, I'm lucky as crap, but when I tell this story, I'm going to church it up and make it sound a lot cooler. You know what I'm saying? So he goes walking past this giant beast and goes into the, uh, follows the end of the hall and goes into this room where it opens up and jewels upon jewels upon gold upon silver and anything you could possibly imagine is everywhere and there's like a giant ruby in the ceiling that's letting the light in <clears throat> that is like making everything shimmer and there's so many diamonds and jewels that it's like he's walking on gravel going into this place and he's like yeah i just struck a gold mine here and um then this dais starts rising up out of the floor in the center of the room and he's like ah i know what this is gonna be this is going to be the withered bones of um, that dumb old wizard. And then he screams. And that's that. Um, so that is the first chapter of Black Colossus by Robert E. Howard. Um, the thing that always trips me out is when you have these civilizations of people that don't have like a McDonald's down the street and they kill like a giant snake. Why aren't they pulling the, the back meat off of that thing? I think that would be like the first thing like, Oh dude, I'm going to be eating good this week. But no one ever thinks that they're just like, where are the jewels? Where are the jewels? So that always trips me out. Because I don't know how these people eat when they're alone in the desert for days on end. But anyway, so that is the prologue to this epic, epic tale. And um, we'll be going over it um, for the next couple weeks. So if you um, have read this already and like it or hate it, let me know down below what your thoughts on this are. Um, I'm a little middle of the road on this story. I like this opening. It's so much fun. Um, and the story is really good. I think this is just one of those ones that I've read so many times and it's not one of my favorites. So, um, I always kind of, I'm just like, oh, black losses. Here we go. Um, but the other thing about Robert E. Howard and his writing that has always boggled my mind is that his chapters are so widely different. Like when we did Rogues in the House, we had like a 2,000 word chapter, um, a 1,500 word chapter, 
and then a um, almost 6,000 word chapter. And in this one, this chapter is like 2,000 words um, filled with a lot of history of the area, um, which is good if you're trying to follow everything around. But then the next chapter is like almost 6,000 words, and then um, the rest of the chapters kind of drop off. But um, there's tons of meat for next week, so make sure you tune in for that, and I will see you then.